one. Python functions can be decorated with extra code, such as logging and debugging information. They also could be used to validate arguments and run the call function, only if certain conditions are met. 2. In this small program, we can see that a function is treated as a normal parameter in a function call. In function run, the first argument is function name, and the rest of arguments are packed as a tuple. The run function returns another function that is passed to it as the first argument. The arguments in a RGS is unpacked in the function return, calling the other function. After defining the calc function, the run function is executed. The first parameter is the calc function, and the others are arguments which will be mapped to the parameter ARGS. 3. In the main program, the print function is imported so Python 3 print statements can be used inside Python 2.7. Next, we have a function count. It will have one argument, a function name. We print the function in the next statement. Next a variable counter is set to zero. This variable is attached to the particular function, so there are separate counters for each function. These outer lines will be only done once per decorated function, as we will see later. Next we have a function called decorator. If we want, we could choose another name. In the decorator function, all arguments are packed into a tuple, ARGS. This is the function, which replaces the original one. 4. Inside the function, we first increment the counter attached to a particular function. The reason this is done is because this particular function is called each time a function is executed. We print the name of the function, as well as its current counter value. The tuple in ARGS is printed. Then we execute the function, and return it. 5. The way to decorate any function is to write the at symbol in the line above the function to be decorated. Now, whenever we call calc1 or calc2, we will call the decorated function and not the function directly. 6. The function calc3 and calc4 are also decorated. In calc4, we only have two parameters. The other three calc functions have three parameters. The outer function in count is done at function definitions and counters should have been set to zero for all these four functions. 7. We then use calc1, calc2, and calc3. In the first call we set the value returned to variable name a. However in the next few lines, the functions are called without storing them. The important thing is that the counter attached to calc1, calc2, and calc3 will be 2, as each function is called twice. 8. The function calc4 is called a total of 4 times. Finally, the value in variable a is printed. 9. The first 4 printouts correspond to the outer function. The rest of the printouts correspond to the inner decorator function. The counter of calc1 becomes 1 after the first calc1 is done. 10. These correspond to the calc4 calculations from the for loop. The loop ranges from i equals 0 to i equals 1. We can see the final value of counter in calc4 is 4. We do not have to use decorators. We can redefine functions by wrapping one function inside another, as shown in the example on Blogspot. 11. You can find additional information including the source code at pythonmobile.blogspot.com.